John Jay, John Jay. Pipe. Hello, and welcome to Talking Baseball, where we are doing our team profile and projections, giving you an episode a day, every day, until opening day, and today's episode is about the Miami Marlins, who you guys ranked as the 20th best team in Major League Baseball. They finished third in the NL East last year. They were 20 games behind the division leader, but did win 84 games, which got them into the wild card round where they did not win a game. And then they lost their GM and they got more J names. So Jake, they've never ever had back-to-back playoff appearances as a franchise. Will they, did they add to help? 84 wins last year, same as the Arizona Diamondbacks, if I'm remembering correctly. They added, huh, (laughs) Christian Betancourt, Vidal Brujan, Nick Gordon from Trev's Twins, trade, Jonah Bride, Darren McCon, uh, hey, Trey Mancini minor league deal. Go go out and go out and rake Trey. We're always rooting for him. Yanni Chirinos and Kurt Casale on minor league deals. They lost Jorge Soler, David Robertson, Chili Wendell, Matt Moore, Jacob Stallings, Garrett Hampson, Yuli Gurriel, Johnny Cueto, Gene Segura. Uh, man, not a lot in, kind of a lot out. I mean, all this polo on, I got solar power. What's the lineup look like, Trev? It seems to always be the problem with this team. It's largely the same lineup they had last year. Obviously, Luis Arise, congratulations on your batting title. Sorry about your arbitration case. Um, Josh Bell's going to be there either at first base or DH. Jake Berger, which is your alter ego, uh, had a great year last year at third base. Jazz Chisholm, center fielder, we think. Got to stay healthy, Jazz. Need you in the game. Brian De La Cruz, Jesus Sanchez, Avisel Garcia. He's been there a long time, hasn't he? And hasn't performed very well. So we'll see how that goes. John Birdie at shortstop, we were just talking about before the show. Nick Fortes behind the plate. Christian Betancourt uh, will back him up. And on the bench, we got the Vidal Brujan and Nick Gordon, who are both out of options. So I believe that both will probably make the roster. And then we're kind of projecting right now that Trey Mancini also makes the roster as a debt piece. So they got some young guys. Like Xavier Edwards could come up, challenge for some center field time, maybe move maybe move Chisholm off of uh, center field, help him stay healthy a little bit. Jonathan Davis as well. Uh, but this is a team that was 15th in runs scored in the NL last year. Yes, they made the playoffs, but like they still need a better offense. James, the bread and butter of this mm. team is the pitching staff. Why don't you tell us about that? Much like the Guardians of last episode, They do have some nice arms. They got Jesus Lazardo. He tossed himself a nice season last year. Made 32 starts, kept the ERA around 3-5. That's good. Uh, Yuri Perez, he also, I don't think he played that many games last year. Uh, 20, 19 starts, but decent enough results. Good results, to be honest. Braxton Garrett's a, a good pitcher. Edward Cabrera and Trevor Rogers, the lefty. So they got arms in the rotation. No uh, Alcantara. That's a bummer. And then in the bullpen, you got Tanner Scott, Andrew Nardi, AJ Puck, George Soriano, JT Chagui, Anthony yeah. Bender, Tony Bender. That's fun. Calvin Foucher. Jake skipped his name in the people sure you did. added. You don't like him. Sure did. I currently don't have him in the pen. And Huasca Brathabom. I get that right, Trev? Ooh, do we have that one listed here on our pronunciation sheet? We do not. So Dalton screwed that one up. <laughs> oh. You crushed it. It's your best guess. It's probably uh Huasker blah the bomb. Thanks, Dalton. Jake. Love you, Dalton. Yes. I don't know. Where do you guys want to start? I think yes. I think it seems like, and Pitching. I apologize to Miami fans, you're gonna it seems like you're gonna have to let us know why you're confident, if you're confident, in the comments from our pre- Speak. Start with the good, Trev, because it is it is the pitching. Not a lot of teams can lose Sandy Alcantara and still feel great about their rotation. Lizardo is a stud. Yuri Perez is an absolute stud. Problem is, as we're recording this, again, I'm going to mention this, that 
Kyle Bradish just went down on the Orioles, and there's been rumors that Lazardo they've talked about having him. So let's just assume that he's there. You got two ace type guys at the top of the <clears throat> uh, rotation. Uh, Edward Cabrera, a little bit of command issues. He's another guy that could be like a you know uh, top end rotation type guy. Um, Braxton Garrett, that's freaking Dalton's guy. He loves him, and I believe in Dalton. So. You got all of these guys, plus some dudes coming up. Max Meyer, uh, first round pick out of the University of Minnesota. Yeah. About that. Sorry, my voice just cracked a little bit right there. So they have pitching in spades, dude. The back end of their bullpen is really good, too. They're all lefties. That's interesting. Um, you're going to mix and match there, most likely. Um, but the pitching is what's going to keep them in you know, the, the race. This team made the freaking postseason last year, and they were last in the NL in runs scored. Like, that's crazy. So it's pitching, pitching, pitching. A little bit of defense for them. Yeah. Uh, Which it has been, by the way. That's We've been freaking, we've been saying, sign J.D. Martinez, please. I'm Just do that. J name. I'm, it is a J name. I'm, I'm getting a little hung up. Jorge Soler, uh, you know, just signed with the Giants. Got a nice little contract. 36 homers, 75 RBI, both led the team last year. And what's currently, how have we replaced that for a team that struggled historically offensively? We, we haven't. And I, you know, I, I hope a guy like, you know, Avisail can tap into something or Trey Mancini does it. Or, or maybe, you know, we, as we record this, we're wondering where, where is the JD Martinez team? You, You'd love to see it, but, I mean, without that right now, Jake Berger breaks out, and I'll, I'll believe in it. You know, there's some pop there. Why, why not? Former first-round pick. Sometimes it takes a year or two to click. Uh, he was good with them. He was good with the Sox. Sure, looks like a good trade. Uh, there's a whole Jazz Chisholm conversation here that it's like, hey, man, I feel like we did it last year. Like, hey, dude, you got to, you know, if you're going to be the MLB, the show cover athlete, like, we need you to prove it. Plays 97 games. Another year he gets banged up with injuries. Uh, 250, 304, 761 OPS. So in those 97 games, you know, he stole 22 bags too and got caught three times. So OPS S plus are our made up stat. Jazz would grade out a little better. Um, but I I don't know. Like I I can't guarantee you this guy's gonna play over a hundred games. Uh, and I can't necessarily guarantee you if he plays over those hundred games. He's going to be the type of player that changes the Marlins' outlook. Like, that was my ask last year. Like, Jazz, take the leap, lead this Marlins team, like, be an MVP candidate. It didn't, and they still got to the playoffs, so there's a little bit of a spin for Marlins fans. But that Soler was, like, an elite power hitter last year. They lost that, and I, the offense is scary. Offensive binder, Jake, not liking this team. You like Josh Bell? I like that Josh Bell ends up being Josh Bell, even though, you know, he struggled with the guard dogs. He came over. He was good good he with them. really good with them, Just yeah. needed a little of that Miami. Trev, you know. You know, baby. Yeah. Just needed to hit uh, in front of Jake Berger. So mm. there's their power right there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what they're kind of thinking. Full years out of those two guys, full year out of Jazz Chisholm, you're going to make up some offense there. But is that enough? Like we like you're talking about again. How many times have I said this? Right, third time, last in N and run scored in the NL. Like if you have that and you're the front office and you're like, shoot, we got great pitching, bullpen and rotation. Like you got to at some point say, let's go get a bat. And I guess we have this conversation on a couple of different teams, man. We've talked about the Guardians. I'm probably gonna say the same thing about the Brewers, and now the Miami Marlins. It's like you. I know Marlins fans feel this. Like, there are bats available. Is your team willing to go just put some money into the roster to make it so you don't got to win nine games over your Pythagorean theorem? Mm. Pythagorean, what did Pythag I just say? Pythagorean I'm, theorem. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm banged up right now. I'm playing through injury. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't count on that every year. So if you think you want this team to compete, you got to go get a bat. Can I tell you something good? Yes. And now I'm going to credit Skip Schumacher for this and only Skip. Mm. Like that. They were second in the league, all 30 teams, in pinch hitting. Mm. 
Mm. Phenomenal okay. placement of their bench into the box. <laughs> you know? Just great pinch hit calls from Skip. As a team, as pinch hitting, they had a 289 batting average, a 345 on base, a 471 slug, 816 OPS, second only to the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. Great job. Most of that damage was done by Jesus Sanchez and John Birdie. Love John Birdie. Joey Wendell's gone. Yeah. Heart and soul of the team. I'm a little nervous. A lot of the people go to the Marlins and think we're going to win, and then, you know, maddeningly left because he realized, oh, they actually don't want to win. Like, we have the foundation that we can build upon, and it's not what they want to do. So he was like, I think I'm out. And then Kim Ang, all reports left for the same reason. So just judging on that, Hard to believe in them. <laughs> You're right, dude. You're totally right. And we always try to put ourselves in the position of the front offices. What what would we do? I think fans love to do that as well. I mean, we've seen the city of Miami show up for like these big kind of baseball events. You know, the WBC, um, you know, the Caribbean uh, World Series was there. Like there's fans there that want to root for their baseball team, but you're not giving them necessarily a good enough product for them to come out here's what i would do i'm gonna play to my fan base and sign every cuban ball player there is right. i'm gonna go do that like let's 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 make that happen number one because they're awesome the twins just signed some dude for 800 grand out of cuba who's supposed to be a stud he's like 17 years old marlins you should have done that like I, I think they need to play to the fan base and go and get kind of go get latin is that weird to say? Like, I'm into that, but they don't seem to be inclined to help their ball club in any way, even that including American ball players. So, I don't know. That's what I would do. It's, I mean, I, I do this once a year, but it, it's just funny how the g general MLB fan views the Miami Marlins as this, like, team that's not going to spend and kind of like this blah franchise when, like, the Miami Heat are, like, one of the NBA's sexiest franchise and players like mm -hmm. want to get down there and it's Miami. It's like one of, it's one of the more electric cities this country has to offer. And uh, yeah, every year it feels like we're saying the same thing about this baseball team and with the Braves and with the Phillies and you know, everything went wrong with the Mets last year. Is, is everything going to go wrong again this year? I mean, that can happen. I've seen that. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's tough going into – it's really hard going into a season. Like, whatever the Miami Marlins do next year, they can't be better than the Braves. I mean, maybe the Phillies. It doesn't matter. Are the, were the Diamondbacks better than the Braves? What's Roasted. The, they weren't. It's a question. He's saying uh, regular season doesn't matter. I'm just saying, like, on paper, sure, but, like, you got into the playoffs last year and you couldn't score runs. Right. Like, you need to address that issue. You're 28th in payroll. Your payroll for 2024 is $75 million. This is, the, this is Major League Baseball, bro. Like, let's let's go. I don't get it. Be better. Try better. They're, like, lightly attacking a window, but there's never going to be a window. So, attack the deadline. Steal pieces that the Braves and the Mets and the other places might want and you get the rentals like if that's how you have to operate then you know if you're not going to spend big on free agents spend big on rentals to attack windows organizations would kill to have co the controllable starting pitching that they have yeah but instead they're they rumored that, to trade what would they it? do they supplement the roster in other ways because they have these young guys basically not making any money and they're starting pitching rotation, which usually that's where a lot of your money goes. They have this this talent there. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm bagging on too much. I'm sorry. I just yeah. that's kind of how I feel. No, it's why it's frustrating though. It's why it's frustrating because even you know going back to the Guardians, it's like I you kind of see their game plan. They're calling up young guys, and they got a lot of guys that can play defense. Like I don't like what what is this offense built upon besides Luis Arias? Contact. Maybe but we have rumors of them getting Anderson now as we record this. As it comes out, he might be there. Ball in play. 
You think you ought to believe in Burger and Bell. You know, we can mm. make a good fast food logo. Taco Bell oh, and Burger man. King combined for all the power. Wow. Sounds delicious. I just trademarked that. It's a parody of the two Trademark players parody. and uh, Taco Bell and Burger King, uh, Burger and Bell. We call it like mm. a fast food fiesta whenever they go back to back. Okay. Okay, boom, done. They, they make those burger tacos now all the time. That's like a smash burger taco. It's like Instagram. I get fed that all the time, so I'm in. Jake send wants send me a link, I guess. <laughs> Got you. And send me a link to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Excited to see this Marlins over-under. And with the NBA season in full swing, you could get in on the action with DraftKings. And how about not sweating a bet? Because with DraftKings, they're giving up a bonus bet back up to $1,000 in the amount of your original bet if it does not hit. Minimum deposit, $5. Sign up using promo code TALK, and they've also got their daily fantasy stuff. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code TALK and get a no-sweat bet. That's promo code TALK and only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Now, before you tell us the number, I want to let you guys know my lean is the under. They're going to have to really not believe in them with what they decide to, to have it be. Okay. The so. over-under is the same as the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, under. 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 <laughs> under. under. I don't think the Mets are going to be that bad again. I think the Phillies are going to be better in the regular season-wise uh, than they were last year. And I think the Braves are going to be just as fucking awesome. So I think the division's going to get harder, and I don't think they got much better. I'm also going to take the under. I just don't see – I don't know. There's got, there has to be so much to go right for them yeah. offensively to to surpass that. So I'm Sweep it. Under. Sweep it. Under. I mean, this – you know, I, I know in our heads it's kind of tough because it's like, okay, this team pitches. They won 84 games last year. The year before that, they went 69-93, and 93, um, and that was the year Sandy won the Cy. Um, and, like, they're, pit, they're pitching pitch that year. So I – they had a nice – they had a nice year last year, 84 wins. Maybe we're missing it. Maybe they've got some young guys who are about to take a step, but I don't know. It's just another, like, not exciting Miami Marlins season, which it should be, like, annually baseball's most exciting team. Jazz Chisholm. More J names. That's They, they got Jake, and they got Josh. Um, Tim changes his name to Jim. I don't know. I just need more. If, I need more J names to fully believe. Is Tim Anderson a junior, isn't he? I think so. Or was he like a third or something like that? Anyways. That depends on middle name. James, before we end the show, your new stat that we're doing. Are you rooting for them or not? Mm, tough time to do this. No, I'm rooting for them to trade their pitching. Okay. We're like Anderson last episode, I'm rooting for the Guardians to not trade their pitching for once. Okay, but I'm rooting like for JD Martinez. I'm rooting for our, our friends Skip, Pepe. So that's John tough. Jay, John Jay, Jake Berger go hit. If they look like they can win a playoff series, I'm rooting for them. Okay, they can. like last year they they no, can win a playoff no, series. No, last People, year they, they couldn't. Can. Make like, us have a conversation. Last year they could not. You would have said the same thing about the snakes. No. Just right here. Just right here. They had a better makeup. Towards some hitters. Then, Boom. Yeah. Fix your problem. How crazy is that? Have us talking about the 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 best, weirdest top four in baseball with the Rise, Bell, Chisholm, and Burger. Do you know that's Nick Gordon, number one, Jazz Chisholm, number two, Luis Arise, number three? Like that. One, two, three. According to arbitration or what? Numbers on the jersey. The uniform numbers. Bottom feeders. That was fun. Come on, Nick Gordon. Oh. Nick Jordan, and I'm in. I like I like Nick Gordon. Nice guy.